Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're doing the buyer's guide slash the review for the Yak 52 module in DCS World. So a little difficult to do this review because this is a relatively slow training aircraft obviously and this is a combat sim but we're going to review it by the same methods or the same structure as we do with all of the aircraft to keep it fair. One, capability. We're going to look at the weapons, the systems and the navigation. Two, the visual effects inside the cockpit and outside, we're going to rate that between 1 and 5, 1 being bad, 5 being good, and you'll be able to compare this against other modules, their score. If you look in the score sheet link within the video description of this video, you can see all of the aircraft there, use the tabs at the bottom please. And you will also see the review score of the other members of GR, so it's not just my score that you see, so you can get a, a broader view. Three, sound effects inside the cockpit and outside of the cockpit. How good are the sound effects? One to five. Four, flight model. Not necessarily how realistic it is. As all of the aircraft in DCS, we expect them to be very realistic because they're in DCS. But I'm more interested in how immersive is it? How does it make me feel like I'm flying a real aircraft and not a video game? Can I feel the weight of the aircraft and the momentum and so on? We'll rate it out of one to five interactivity and detail in the cockpit how many of the switches and the buttons are actually usable and the systems behind those switches and buttons how complex and well modeled they one to five difficulty rated between one to five one is neither good nor bad and five is neither good nor bad but how difficult is it to learn this module from the scratch and learn all of the functions and the systems etc just to give you an idea welcome to the yak 52 cockpit so in terms of military capability, well, there is none to be honest. If I go to the armament screen, I mean, it's a lightweight trainer play at the end of the day. I can have some smoke of various colours, which isn't particularly useful, uh, but there's something you can do. Now, it does have good visibility and it has a second seat back there that we can use, we'll talk about in a minute. So we thought that we could use it as a spotter plane. Spotting, visual spotter planes are very useful in what we call third generation missions, so missions that don't have um, aeroplanes with T-pods and stuff like that for bombing. But the problem is, it's such a slow aircraft, just like the Kristen Eagle, it has the same problem. It's so slow that you can't get to the target in time before the bombs have all been dropped so we've never really got to use it and it's a shame because of that so unless the target is literally you know a couple of miles away uh, it's, it's tactically useless in uh, military use and DCS is a military you know combat sim at the end of the day it's obviously a training plane Russian 1970s training plane and it does it very well it teaches you to fly that's uh, that's what it's designed for it does it very well we can fly on single player in the front copy here so this would be the student or we can fly in the rear cockpit here. This is where the tutor would be. Um, note that the tutor has the ability to fake system failures. So uh, I could fake a airspeed indicator failure. So the airspeed uh, gauge, the speedo would not, no longer read in the front cockpit. Uh, the ADI I could turn off and the rate of climb. So there's VSI and a slip gauge I could turn off there. And um, to simulate failures, I think that was all that we could do. So that's pretty cool. A uh, multiplayer, this is a multi, what we call a multi crew vehicle. So if you go multiplayer, you can have two humans in it at the same time. Uh, one human at a time can fly it, and you can request permission to fly the bird from the back or from the front. So uh, that's pretty cool. So we've got no weapons, we've got no sensors. We do have basic navigation. Uh, it's a while since I've looked at this. This is the ARC system. This is a basic form of radio navigation. It allows us to find our ways to NDBs, non-directional beacons, transmitting radio signals, usually uh, in and out of markers or runways. There's probably one on this runway here. So that, uh, that'll allow us to direct it. Now, it didn't actually work a year ago when this came out, and I haven't tested whether it was working at the moment. So um, for capability, uh, I can't think of anything else. Next, we're going to do visuals. So we're going to look inside the cockpit and outside the cockpit and rate it between one and five. And I am a fan. It's not perfect. You know, you get a bit of texture breakup, but it's on par with the decent uh, modern modules. This is modern. This is pretty much exactly a year old. It must have come out in, what, August 2018? So it's August 2019 now. Oh, this padding looks cool. Yeah, the instruments are good. They look a little bit painted on. For some reason, I don't know why they're not. They are proper 3D, you know, and everything. They cast shadows and stuff like that. ADI looks really good. Look, look at that. All around is pretty good. When you zoom in on any of the modules, they start to break down a little bit. Look at that. I mean, look at the texture of that little switch they've done. It's pretty cool, right? All this. It's, it's pretty good. Happy with it all. 
Must be the best looking stick in DCS. Look at that. Really good high quality textures down here. Really good to see. Looks really good back there. Let's go and have a look in look at all this this metal uh, these struts here. It looks really cool. Hmm. Canopy looks awesome. Must be the best canopy in DCS. Look how it just looks realistic. It just looks good. Very happy with that. Uh, let's go and have a look at it in front. Um, I'm aware that you can't see the co-pilot. I've turned him off accidentally and I can't work out how to turn him back on, but you can have him showing. We can have both of them showing. Oh, I shouldn't have done that, should I? Actually, that sounds quite cool. Lovely little engine. It's bow and the framework looks good. Buttons look awesome. Light instruments, high res. Love that ADI. Best looking ADI in DCS. Ah, I do apologise. I forgot to talk about the radio. We have got a, a radio here. I think it's a single channel, uh, manual programmable radio. Uh, I think it's VHF only. It's a long time since I, you know, it's a year since I've studied this. So, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I paid about fifty dollars for it. I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I wouldn't really want anything changed in here. All these textures and stuff. Someone's had to sit down and paint all this, record it, and stretch it and paint it. All this stuff down here, really, you know, it's on par with the F14, really, which is pretty much top top of uh, DCS at the moment. Okay, let's go and have a quick look outside, shall we? Okay, a bit of a boring texture I've chosen, but I promised not to change any of the textures from default because I didn't want to be seen to kind of make them look better than they are or worse than they are, or, you know, get myself in trouble. The rivets really good. They look like they're 3D. Unless you really zoom in like that, they really look like they're proper 3D rivets, which is pretty cool, you know, raised rivets. Must be one of the reasons why it's such a slow plane. The end of that wing looks a bit dodgy. Look at that. Awesome landing gear, look at that. Oh, huh? Does break up a bit. To be honest, all of them break up in DCS to a certain extent. Do the engine in there. Pretty cool. I imagine we can pr probably close these um, these uh, louvre vents. I uh, can't remember how to do it though. Humans always look a bit shitty in DCS. I don't know how they make such crappy looking humans. They look really fake compared to other, you know, armour and stuff like that. But that's the same with all of them. Excellent canopy, such a good looking canopy. Body looks really good all over, to be honest. detail down there look amazing tire look at that <laughs> looks like a real tire that's pretty cool okay all round it's pretty good it's impressive it's impressive it's good 
It's a good solid standard we expect from, you know, it's 2018 module at the end of the day. It's what we expect. It's what we're given. It's not top brass. It's not quite F14. It's not quite F18. But I can't actually find anything I don't like the look of. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm not judging, you know, how cool the thing is. I'm judging the quality of the textures, the quality of the polygons. And everything's just really pretty good. It's pretty good and happy with it. I'm going to give it a 4. I want to give it over 4, but less than 4.5. So, I know it's awkward, but I'm going to give it a 4.25 for graphics. Next, we're going to look at the sound effects, interior and exterior. So, it's going to be a little bit difficult to judge because I've got a uh, kind of uh, structure for rating the sounds in these modules, and this won't comply to a lot of the sounds that I want to hear, like um, G noises and uh, high alpha stresses on the airframe, because, you know, this aeroplane just can't really do that. But we'll give it a go and uh, see what kind of sounds we get. I guess first we'll look inside the cockpit, just rev the engine, make sure that she, I can hear the whole RPM range, she sounds realistic. Oh, that's good. That's really good. It's a, ra yeah, it's a radial engine. Love these radial sounds. That's on par with the A8 the Fokker Wolf 190. It sounds really good. Nice. Something about those radials. Okay, just gonna run the air, listen to some flight sounds. I have no idea how to fly this, I haven't done it for a year, but we'll try. Just by doing it by feel. God, that sounds good, doesn't it sound good? Wish some of the warbird sounded like that. Where's the speedo? There it is. Sorry, I'll stop talking. Lovely, to be honest. It sounds, it sounds very much like a toned down A8 to me, which has probably got the best sounds at the moment in DCS. speed or speed we can get ah oh, i can hear wind noise you hear that it's a bit over the top but it's there it's important in these modules they mix everything they mix the wind noise and the engine noise the wind noise is a bit much but maybe it's a loud airplane inside i like it it sounds fine i like big wind noise in my airplanes airplanes because wind noise means i can tell how fast i'm going without having to look at the speedo so if i was in a dogfight which is let's face it not very likely but possible in this aircraft i can tell how fast i'm going just by the wind noise let's see if we can do some maneuvers this may end very badly but Pulling G, you hear G there, it's got the G sound. Hasn't got any high alpha sound, or nothing obvious to high alpha sound, but I don't really expect it to, to be honest. It's just not that kind of aircraft. Uh, there's no weapon sounds just to check. There is ground rumble. Did we hear any ground rumble? Uh, something I forgot to check. Let's go and uh, check that. I want to hear ground rumble, obviously. Not obviously. Yeah, I can hear it. You can hear it? there and it's good. Happy with that. Okay. Interior, pretty top notch. I don't actually know how to work this thing. I'm just going to have to neutralise it, don't I? Like that. Um, outside, happy with it. Volume's good. Sound of it's not really nice. Happy with the sounds all round, to be honest. Um, 
no, you know, not the best out there, but pretty good. I think the sounds will give a good solid uh, four out of five. While we're airborne, we can look at the uh, flight model. So we, I'm not looking so much how realistic it is. Again, if it's in DCS world, we just expect it to be very realistic. That's just a default position it takes. I'm more looking for how immersive it is and how does it feel? Does it make it feel like I'm in a real plane or does something feel weird and out of place? It's very hard to quantify the flight model and it's very much in the eye of the beholder, but I've got plenty of experience, so I'm pretty well placed to do it. Um, not in terms of real aircraft, I don't fly real aircraft, but virtual aircraft. And um, I am a fan already. Uh, I can just feel it, it just feels right. It's not particularly maneuverable, it's very slow. So in terms of performance, it's terrible. But in terms of actual flying, how the flight model feels, it's good, it's got it right. I just reviewed the Christian Eagle, and that doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel real. It doesn't move right, it doesn't have the feeling of inertia. I can't really explain it, uh, I can't quantify it at least. But this, it's got it, it's got it just right. Everything feels right, the way it moves in relation to what I'm doing with the stick. Gives me plenty of feedback as well. If I'm gonna overstress it, it's gonna tell me that. Wow, it is actually quite maneuverable. I'm trying to drop a wing. I dropped a wing there, yeah. It feels very much like a warbird in the way that works. Shakes, it's got good sounds when it shakes as well. Uh, cockpit shake like most of the aircraft do. Um, it's interaction with the ground is pretty top notch. Pretty happy with that, got no problems. It can bounce, it can skid, do that kind of cool stuff. Let's, uh, let's try and upset it, shall we? controlled it's a lovely little plane isn't it lovely completely useless in DCS but that really is good really is a good flight model and again after a while you can when you've flown enough planes you know what feels right and you know what doesn't feel right this just feels really good let's try snap roll let's get up here this may end badly but we'll see that's <laughs> pretty cool for a fairly long straight wing training plane that's pretty good oh stalled it what's gonna happen here What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Look at that! Oh, I'm not going to survive this, but that did look cool. Or maybe I will. Oh, shit! Yeah, I thought that might happen. Probably best pretend that didn't happen. But I got to feel everything I needed to there, and I can confirm it is has top notch. Very satisfying to fly. Got all the feel, feed, all the feel, feedback that I need to fly it to the limit and beyond. So in terms of what it is, uh, I'm going to rate it a good 4.5 out of 5 for flight model. I'm very happy with it. Next is interactivity in detail. It's how many of the controls can I press down here? How do I interact with this aircraft? From memory, just about everything does what it's supposed to and works. I can't remember anything that didn't work. Oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> what the hell? Let's see if we can do it. <laughs> if I want to break my plane, I want to break my plane. I want that control. Uh, everything here is chronometer. Where's the uh, cage that and adjust it? Where is the barometric altimeter? Where is the barometric altimeter? I can't actually find it because I'm an idiot. There it is. So you change the QFE there, Q and H. Radio all works, I've tested all of that. Yeah, engine controls. Ah, oh, it's good, isn't it? Everything's got the that, that kind of vegan quality of insideness. In terms of clicking those buttons, it sounds good and solid. This is, I'm guessing this is magnetic variation, yeah. So what I mean? Just when they bother adding these little sounds that sound perfect. Even that's making a small sound. No, maybe not actually. Have a look in the back. Again, same thing down here. Oh look, I oh did I just freeze it? Look at that! Wow, super plane. Okay, must be very light. Everything I remember works down here. I don't think we're going to find a control that doesn't work. 
Oh, a control that doesn't work. Bad yak. Bad yak. Uh, don't know what it is. So I can't say, but at least if, if it doesn't activate, I will still want to be able to turn that knob and switch that button. Um, that matters to me if I'm spending my $50. If it was free, you know, fine. Don't bother, but I'm spending my money. I want it. Again, if things change, I'll re-review it, but no, I'm just reviewing them as they are. It's, there's not many controls, but everything works. About removing the cat. Ah, here we go. Yeah, it's all pretty top-notch. And I remember all the systems behind everything. Everything works well. You've got your hydraulics modelled, your air is modelled, and, and, and so on. It's just, yeah, it's good stuff. So for what we've got here, um, I'm going to say it's, we are missing a little bit there. Everything else is there. I'm going to say interactivity is 4.5 out of 5. So this thing is rating real high. I should say as well, it's always worth checking my score sheet. I reserve the uh, right to, and I will do, change the scores from time to time. You know, if I wake up in a good mood, I'll rate things higher. If I wake up in a bad mood, I'll rate things lower. Because uh, I am uh, just about a human being at the end of the day. But as time goes on, I change my results slightly and tailor them um, in the sheet. So that is the official score, uh, rather than what I'm actually saying here. But yeah, 4.5, I'm happy with that. Next is difficulty between 1 and 5. 1 being a Flaming Cliffs 3 plane. 5 being an A10C. You know, lots of study learnt. Uh, it's down the bottom end, obviously, as a trainer. It's meant to be relatively simple. But you do need some grasp of basic and navigation. Um, you need to understand the radio system for navigation. Understand your radio in the front to get the full your, the full fidelity effect out of, out of um, uh, a plane like this. And you need to understand how the engine works. Your engine cowling, your radiators and whatnot, and your mixture. And uh, keep your engine working and in good condition. You need to read your engine dials and whatnot and keep an eye on your pressures. So because of that, it is above Flaming Cliff's uh, plane. So I'm going to rate it 2 out of 5 for difficulty. In terms of its working history, to be honest, I haven't flown it in a year since I got it. So I don't really know. But all I remember, the only thing that wasn't working was the radio, uh, the ADF, the uh, ARC system. And I must admit, I haven't checked for the last three months or so whether, whether that's fixed. It's probably not. So I don't think the ADF is working, correct me if I'm wrong. Other than that, I've not known any problems. I guess there's not really much to go wrong with it. So that's it. Just to summarise, it's a training plane. Obviously it has no offensive capabilities, but the quality of it, it really, it really is top-notch. It's only competitor in DCS is the Christian Eagle 2. The Christian Eagle 2 can do much funkier manoeuvres, but this is a better module than the Christian Eagle 2. Uh, in terms of graphics, how they're about the same. The Christian Eagle is a bit better in terms of sound. Uh, this is uh, definitely a bit, it definitely is better, you can tell. Flight model is much better than the Christian Eagle 2. Christian Eagle 2 just doesn't have a good, as good flight model, and you'll know that if you went to fly it. Interactivity and detail, they're both about the same, basically. So I'd rate this module slightly higher, although you can't do the fancy stunts. That's all I've got to say. I hope that helps someone out there, and see you later.